Athletic compliance is a term used when a university is caught in an athletics violation or scandal. But what does it truly mean? This is what the Sports and Society Initiative attempted to find out during their event known as Complying, examining the rules and regulations that govern student athletics on Thursday, October 3rd. For two hours, a series of panelists consisting of compliance officers, former student athletes, and athletic and academic administrators talked about the merits of athletic compliance. Leading this panel was Kevin Blackestone, a professor of journalism at the University of Maryland, a national sports columnist for the Washington Post, and a frequent contributor on the ESPN program Around the Horn. I'm with Kyle Snyder, Katie Ledecky, being able to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars in the sport that they participate in, in the NCAA, but JT Barrett couldn't make a penny doing the same thing. Blackstone was joined by Ohio University professor and author David Rithpath. My argument is it isn't that the NCAA doesn't punish those bigger schools on occasion. My argument is, is they oftentimes won't or they won't look as deep. Alongside others such as Ricky Volante, the CEO of the Historical Basketball League. Long look at exactly how to be successful first and foremost as a, as a sports entity. To discuss the contentious topic that faces the modern collegiate athletics landscape. The panel discussed a variety of issues, from possible student payment to disparities in punishment regarding NCAA violations from universities. But, the, but where we start the argument is what we're doing now doesn't work. We are not the regulatory body that is designed to um, arbitrate whether one class is better than another. On any Until they system. are, they do it with initial eligibility all the time. This is Stephen Kishbaugh for Lantern TV.